Um, you guys can hear me okay? We're all good on the sounds? Yes. Cool. So uh, just some quick ground rules before we get started. If you have any questions, you can just type it in chat or, um, or I guess in the middle of a break, whenever I stop talking, you can just ask a question. Uh, just unmute yourself. Um, I think we only have what, like, uh, like 10 people on the call. So it should be pretty good, pretty open format. If you have any questions, just ask them away. Um, so me and Tommy will be running through some of the features on the app today. Um, and Tommy will give you some good insights on how you can use this to help uh, talk to your database and help deepen those relationships and be the, uh, the real estate expert for them. So are you guys ready to get started? Yes. Bang, awesome, okay. So um, what is the KW app called in the app store? Um, KW. Right, so uh, for you to have the app downloaded, you have to go to the app store, Google Play, right? And you have to type in KW app and the app will come up as a red uh, KW with a white background, mm -hmm. right? So um, just make sure everyone has it downloaded and um, to make it to where it's branded to you once you have it downloaded, right? And if you previously had it downloaded, you can just go to the app store and update it. Um, but to have it uh, to double check or to put it to where that you're the um, you're the agent for it, um, you would have to go into more and then you would have to go into my account. So underneath the profile, um, let me actually go back a few steps. So if you've never downloaded the app and you're downloading it now, um, you're going to get a prompt saying, uh, let me just make sure I can't see my screen. You're going to get a prompt saying, uh, type in your first and last name. So is anyone downloading it for the first time? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. Yeah. So once you have it downloaded, um, I would just put your first and last name in there and your email. And once you have that downloaded, uh, it will be as were as you were a consumer um, for the app. So Tommy, uh, do you have, uh, do you want to walk us through how, um, how you add yourself in the agent in the more area? Um, in, through command or? Uh, through on the app. On the app. Because mine's already, I already have mine as. Um, I as think it, 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 it'd be in profile, wouldn't it? Right, yeah. So once you hit profile, um, and if you, as you can see at the top, it has my information up here. Um, if you hit view profile, at the very bottom, it says find an agent, right? So I'm assuming if you did not already, uh, connect yourself, you would just go find yourself as the agent uh, through the app, right? And if you start typing in your name, then you should pop up in there. Then you should pop up in there. Yeah. So once you click that, then, um, and I'm going to let this, let this catch up on the screen. Uh, is my Wi-Fi connected? It is. Okay. So, uh, so once you select that, then, then your app will be branded to you. Right, and so why is that important? Because we are trying to share it and people have to see our information, our the phone number, our email address, everything else. Right, correct. Yeah, so you want it to be branded to you because whenever you share the app or your, your consumers, your friends, your clients, your family share the app, uh, you want it to already have you there as, um, you want it to already have you linked so they don't, they don't have to go find an agent. Right, so there's different ways that they can share the app. One of the ways is they can click on your name at the very top when it says view profile and they can click refer, right? And there's different ways uh, to refer. You can click on, um, you can click on email, you can click on text, right? And if you click on text, for example, and you just met a client at an open house, um, you can, with just having their phone number, you can send them the app. Right, and at the bottom, there's a pre-populated text that says, this is the KW agent I was telling you about. And then here's some information, right? Here's the, the click link to, to download the app, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you wanted this to go from, for example, would this look weird if you sent this to your clients? I think we when we send it, it's not gonna be these few lines. It's gonna be the different shape right it's showing the app not these lines when they open their text message 
Right. So it's going to show the app. But what I'm saying is that the, the message on there, it says, this is the KW agent I was telling you about, right? Yes. yes. So if you sent that to, to a client, it would look kind of weird because you're the KW agent that you were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So what you can do is, is uh, my phone turned off. One sec. What you can do is you can alter this message, right? As long as you don't touch the link, which is, which is this part right here. You can alter this and say and say something along the lines of, you know, this is the KW app I was talking about. You know, um, here's a new way to find homes, right? Or something like this, right? And you can copy this message and you can go and save it in your notes on your iPhone or in your notes on your Android. And um, you can, if, if you were to be sending this from, that's oh, a CSS call. Um, if you were to be sending, oh, okay. I'm on do not disturb, not sure why, getting calls. Okay, uh, yeah, if you were to send this to your clients, you can have a pre-populated message that, that is accustomed to you, right? And all you would do is you would go into your notes, you would click copy, and then um, you would paste it into the text message or you would paste it into the email. So, that way it's a little bit more personalized, but, but this is what it would look like, you know, if your, um, if your friend referred you to another client, right? And the context of this message makes sense, right? So this is the KW agent I was telling you about, right? So if it's a friend of a friend that's referring this agent or that's referring the app, um, this pre-populated message makes sense. So is there any questions on, on the profile on how to refer from this screen? and how to find yourself in the app to, to attach yourself to the, um, to the account. Mm -hmm. No? Okay. So yeah, that's, that's the first thing I wanted to go over. I just wanted to make sure that, that everyone's app is linked to themselves, right? And, um, and down here, there's also another button, which is a little bit more glaring. It's, it's actually just says share the KW app. So once you click that, you get the same prompt and you get a different text message. Um, and I'm going to let that update on the screen. There we go. So, and then there's another way, there's another link, and it says, I use the KDB app to search for homes with my realtor, Ivan Stark. Download it now for a personalized experience. All right. So, um, again, if this was a client sending to another client, this message makes sense. But if you were to send it to your client with this message, it wouldn't really make any sense, right? Because you're talking about yourself as the realtor that's helping you, right? So I'd recommend you guys go into notes as long as you keep this link up here. Uh, as long as you keep this, this up here correct and you don't change it, because um, this is how the, the app will link to you, right? So as long as that stays the same, you can alter the message and you can put this, um, you can put this at the end, you can put this at the beginning. It really doesn't matter as long as the link is the same, as long as it stays the same. So. Um, can I interject a little bit? Sure, good. Um, I learned in one of the classes, uh, I did exactly what Ivan just said, and I went into my notes, um, and I put in here, I can't see what I said, so here's my personal app, and then there's the link, and then underneath it, I put some of the features of the app. Um, here's some of the features of the app. You can search current homes on the market nationwide. You can search neighborhoods, landmarks, and buildings, no other map. No other app does that. I learned that through a um, uh, uh, KW Connect video that you can search by, um, if you want to search by Hoover Dam and and, click and type that in there, you can go find Hoover Dam. Um, and then hyperlocal information about neighborhoods and schools. And then it goes into the loan and so forth. So I kind of enhanced, I don't know if you can see any of that. Uh, you can't. Anyway, I just enhanced the message that shows them additional things that this thing will do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. You're, you're not limited to a short text message, right? You can type in as much detail as you want. And I would actually be on the side of, of kind of what Tommy's talking about. Uh, give them some of the features. Give them some of that text that says no other app has this, right? Give them an incentive to download the app and let them know that it's just not another real estate app, which is just going to show you some houses and you're going to get bombarded with ads every five seconds, um, 
So it's just a real estate specific app. Um, it's great. There's insights, there's landmarks, there's pictures, there's uh, the Keller mortgage tells you how much uh, your mortgage payment's going to be, right? There's the Keller covered offer option. Um, so there's so many different features and it's not just the real estate app, right? So uh, thank you for that, Tommy. So let's go. Um, I think the easiest way to go through this is we can start at the bottom and just go from left to right. Um, so at the very bottom, when we click on search, uh, a couple of neighborhoods pop up, right? And so can anyone answer where we get these neighborhoods from? Uh, and, and how are these neighborhoods populated? I don't know. Oh. Uh, can I answer? Sure, go ahead. Um, in it from next door. Yes, that's correct. Um, so, <laughs> yay, you, you get a free beer on me <laughs> next time I see you. Um, so, yeah, so these neighborhoods are auto populated from next door. Uh, and as you can see, you can click on the specific neighborhood, like Windsor Park, and some information is going to pop up, right? So, uh, just some quick information like the market snapshot, right? Um, we have our current stats, we have the average days on market, we have the sold stats. Um, there's two homes recently sold. Uh, I'm assuming the average price is that high because those were rentals. Um, and then at the very bottom, it says what the locals say, right? Again, this is more insight into the neighborhood that, for example, um, that other apps might not offer, right? So you have the late night leisure, fitness oriented, outdoorsy, organized sports, healthy foods, center gardening. We can click see more and then there's just some more information, right? It's just a, it's just a regular neighborhood in Plano. So there's not gonna be, you know, too much um, variation in it, I would say, right? Um, but it's still nice to know some of these things. So a great feature down here, which I think is, um, is amazing because the, the number one question that a lot of people ask is, you know, how far away is this from, you know, my job, right? Followed by how far away is this from my grandparents' house? You know, how far away am I to, to this location or to this shopping center, right? So down here, uh, the I added our office, right? So it turns out that this neighborhood is uh, five minutes away from our office if we were to drive, right? Same thing, it's nine minutes if I were to bike and uh, 32 minutes if I was gonna walk. How did you put the address? So underneath there, it says add a place. Um, and if you click that, then you can add a place. So let's let's do that again. So let's do 3600 Preston Road. Okay. Plano. And then you can add that right there, right? So all you do is just type in the address and then um, and you can edit through directions and delete. I'm assuming directions is, I can just click on that actually, if that feature works right now. Looks like it doesn't, but, um, and I'm assuming that's just gonna take you to your Google Maps and just automatically put that in there. Um, so this is a really cool feature. They can add multiple locations. Um, they can add, like I said, their work, you know, uh, the elementary school that their kid goes to, the middle school, high school, um, or any other landmarks or areas that, that they um, find it very important to them in their home buying experience. And they can quickly, at a glance, look at how far away it is from from those different uh, from those different areas, right? Uh, and again, at the bottom, it says these figures are just uh, estimates, right? Um, obviously, this is going to be different during traffic time, and and many other factors. So, but this gives you a pretty pretty good idea. So, any questions on on the commute times or on the um, on what the locals say? And let me pull up chat real quick. Uh, uh, is that a question? I don't have nope. the, um, this, uh, the button for the new place or whatever you said. I don't have that um, option in my add a place. Uh, is your app updated? Um, I think I have it on automatic update. Mm -hmm. So are you in an iPhone? Yes. Okay, so yeah, I'd go to the Apple store, I'd hit your name at the top, and then I would hit just update. And if it's, uh, then just make sure that's up to date or you can just restart the app. So uh, I think I've had this feature for, for a while, so I think it should be available for everyone as well. Um, and then in, in chat, I did see another question. It says on, on um, oh, thank you for inviting me. 
Uh, on the old app, if you're in front of the house for sale or open house, it takes you to the MLS page for that house showing details. Can the same be done in the new app? Defaults to the map. Uh, I think it'll always default to the map. So, um, so they would have to type in the specific address of the house. Yeah. So, as we keep going down, um, this part is pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's just the neighborhood schools, and there is some there is some information on there, like the student teacher ratios, um, and the specific grades that the uh, that the schools are are, are um, cover right there's also the private schools in there as well again student teacher ratio and then at the very bottom it gives you the source um, of where they got that information so as we keep going down um, let's zoom on this map real quick there are uh, and I don't think because last time I don't think this feature worked either um, and partially, I'm assuming because there are no restaurants or um, or grocery stores inside the neighborhood, right? That's why nothing pops up. But um, if I do my neighborhood, uh, if I do my neighborhood, um, since mine is in the middle of Plano, on the edges of Plano, there are, or in the edges of the intersections, there's uh, restaurants and stuff. So those those come up for me, and then um, I can click on that here in a second. Um, and there is another question. I believe this is recorded to the cloud. Um, so uh, you said your iPhone is not cooperating with you. So what do you mean by that? Is your app not opening or is your, just your phone it's not working? It's the internet, the internet problem, I believe. Yeah. I don't want to lose you. Okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you can just follow along and then um, you can always see this recording and mykw.kw.com. If you click on education, there's also a ton of videos on, on specific features and how to get through all this as well. So, yeah. Okay, and our education, right? Yeah, for sure. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, so and also at the bottom, you see there's two homes for sale, right? And there's nothing else. So uh, this house looks really awesome. So let's just click on this and let's see what comes up. So it, it's a lot faster on my uh, on my phone than it is on here. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. And the picture is HD, and it just takes a little bit of time to get it on the uh, on Zoom. So at the very top, there's just some brief details on the home, uh, price, bedrooms, bathrooms, square feet, which is usually the first. You know, that's the first big three, four things that people look for, right? Price, bedrooms, bathrooms, square feet, and then they kind of dive deeper into the home. So there's some options on here. You can save, hide, or share it. Um, and then the next part is, I always find really cool, is that it tells you how much you can save if you were to use Keller Mortgage on this home, right? Which is $4,396. Again, that's an awesome incentive if you're uh, talking to a prospect, someone you met at an open house, and they're like, oh man, I, I, I would love to save $4,400, right? And then they, would, then they can click Ask Your Agent, Right, and then they can send me a, an information, um, which will give me a Kelly notification and a, a notification command saying that you know, this person wants information about this house or about Keller Mortgage. And I believe if they click on that, it actually takes them to, uh, let me see if this will load on my phone. It actually takes them to the Keller Mortgage application um, process, right? So I'm not going to hit accept. Um, I'm going to wait for Zoom to catch up. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, that's great. And then you can also uh, save some money on your home insurance. You can click on that as well. Um, there's a small description for the home, which you can click on more. Uh, and where does this description come from? Can anyone tell me? MLS. MLS, correct. Yeah, so all yes. this information is syndicated through MLS. Um, at the, down here, it says courtesy of Keller Williams Realty and then the MLS number. There's some more home details on here, um, like the status, this is pending, it's a beautiful home, it's awesome that it went under contract. Uh, 78 days on site, price per square foot, years built, house size, and the lot size. Again, we can, we can scroll down. It gives you the neighborhood uh, information on here. Um, the average home price, average price per square foot, and then down here, what local we'll say, and then just a different reformatted, um, information that we saw on the other screen, but just personalized to the home, right? Uh, and then down here, again, uh, one of my favorite features, um, again, this is just an estimate, right? Because this all changes, uh, but they, you can see 
what it would look like if you paid all cash for it. And let me, let's zoom catch up. There it is. Yeah, so obviously all cash would be the full amount. And then um, if you do mortgage, it will show you what the 30 year fixed rate is. If you click on this, you can actually change the loan type. Um, again, let me wait for Zoom to catch up. Boom, okay. Yeah, so let's say we wanna do a 15 year fixed. Right, and we're gonna do, and then we can click on everything that's, that's underlined. Um, you can adjust, right? So we can click on down payment. Uh, we can do 20%. We can hit apply. And let's wait for Zoom to catch up. There it is. Yeah, so it turns out that with a 4.25% interest rate, this is how much that would be per month. Um, again, you can change this interest rate down to, it'd probably be somewhere around here, I think, if it was 15 years. There it is, yeah. So your client can easily adjust and play around with these numbers. Um, again, this is pretty useful for, for really anyone, uh, especially first time home buyers. If they're very keen on keeping their monthly payment under a certain amount, this is just a great way to look at that ahead of time. And then they can, I would still encourage them to follow up with their lender, right? And double check these numbers and make sure that, that they're able to afford the home. At the, at the bottom, of course, it says the calculator is just an estimate. Uh, contact, Keller Williams, uh, contact Keller Williams for full and accurate mortgage assessment. So again, as, you're, as you can see, as you're scrolling at the very bottom, the scheduled video tour and ask your agent stays the same. So at any point during this, right, if they look at this and they say, you know what, I can afford this home, I like this home, you can click ask your agent and this pops up and then you'll get a notification for, from your client, right? Um, you can schedule a video tour. And at the very bottom, it also gives you the activity for this home, 25 views, zero favorites, zero hides. So as more people start using the app and as it becomes a little bit more fleshed out, um, this information will uh, come up kind of like it does on Zillow and on Realtor.com, uh, where it shows how many people have saved the home, how many people have looked at the home. Um, I think this is pretty important um, when it comes to those on the fence buyers um, who, you know, this could, for example, if this said 400 views, you know, 100 favorites, right, and no one's hid the home. So that means that there's a lot of people that like the home. That could possibly mean that there's a lot of people showing the home, right? And I can kind of convince them to, if they really want the home, they don't want to miss out, that they can you know, kind of dive in. So at the very bottom, again, it, it goes into some more nearby homes, right, that you can kind of look at. Uh, again, this is to keep them on the app to make sure that they're looking at homes. Um, and there's just some disclaimers at the very bottom with information. So, um, Tommy, did you want to add anything to, to the specific home or anything like that as I scroll through some of these pictures? Uh, it was, uh, I, don't, I don't need to add anything. The, uh, the uh, location feature of how, how my commute time to other places is a huge thing on this app. Uh, a lot of other apps don't have that on there. And as I get this app and make it more robust, it'll add more features to it. Right. Yeah, so, you know, this is the worst it's ever gonna look, right? That's the expression that everyone likes to use is um, it's being updated all the time. New features are being added. So, um, you know, so just keep playing around with it, log into it, I mean, at least once a week, if not more, right? Um, and I would encourage you to share it with your clients. Again, I would encourage you guys to mess around with the app, click all the buttons, do all the things. So that way, if they have any questions, um, you'll be able to answer it, right? Because um, if, if they're like, hey, I didn't know this feature was there, then you're like, oh, I didn't know about it either, right? So that way, you kind of know what's happening in your own app. So at the top left, we go back to the main screen. Uh, again, we're going to go back to the main screen. And we're back to... Um, we're back to the uh, the home screen of the app, right? At the very top, it, we can zoom out if you like pinch your fingers like that, and then um, you can go ahead and zoom back in. Let me just click on this real quick. Let me go to the very bottom. Okay, yeah. So this is what I was talking about. So this neighborhood is on uh, Spring Creek in Coit. And I know that there's uh, the, ch the legendary Chick-fil-A is there. Oh, wait, um, I'm going to have to wait for <laughs> Zoom to load. Here it is. Yeah. 
So uh, legendary Chick-fil-A is there. Uh, and it, there's a Walmart in the other parking lot. But um, so this, this one clearly has some uh, restaurants in there, right? Some highlights and you can scroll and it, it tells you what, what's around there, you know, what kind of food's there. And you can sort it by restaurants or by grocery stores. So this feature works. Again, if it's, if it's a, a neighborhood in the middle of like a subdivision or something, right? Or a subdivision in the middle of, of a huge uh, city block, probably not gonna have anything like this because there's no Walmarts or stores or Targets inside. But uh, if you get those edge, uh, edge neighborhoods along the big streets, you're gonna have some, some you know, restaurants and, and uh, grocery stores. So this is pretty cool. I always thought it was a cool feature. Um, again, they're gonna, if you click on any of these, it'll probably take you to Yelp, um, but I don't wanna click off of, the, uh, off of the app right now. So as we zoom out, okay. So um, on the right, so that, that's pretty much everything in search. Um, if we go, actually, I wanna cover one more thing. So at the top right, if you click, Let's wait for Zoom to catch up. There it is. Okay. Top right, if you click on that arrow, um, can anyone tell me what that arrow does? Reach arrow? Yeah, so it'll tell you where you are in the neighborhood. So right now it says I'm at home. Uh, please don't come visit me at my house. Um, but yeah, I'm there. Uh, so it'll, it'll, um, it'll locate where you are um, using the current location feature, right? Okay. And so let's say I'm in this neighborhood and look at these four uh, listings that decided not to list with me. I'm very upset with them, but that's okay. Uh, we can, at the top, we can click on price. Uh, and we can, as, as you can see, the default is any because it wants to show you any and all listings. But let's say that my price is 300,000. We can click done. And okay, so my neighborhood has one listing uh, at 275, right? Let's say that we want at least three plus bedrooms. Yeah, the house should still be there. Property type. Again, um, if you're in the middle of, uh, of this neighborhood, I mean, I don't, we don't have any condos in my neighborhood. Um, we do have, uh, town, uh, not townhouses, duplexes. There's a little strip of duplexes here. But uh, yeah, so if you want to look at the house specifically, and if you click on that, this one will disappear. Um, because there's no houses for two, under 300 in this neighborhood. But we can click on it and we can click on different features like apartments, lots and land. There's not gonna be any lots and land here. Um, we can click done. So this is a pretty bare bones, very quick for people to set up, right? Um, so they can pull this out anytime. They can click on the current location. It'll show you where the current location is and they can show you, you know, the price and the bedrooms um, and the property type. You can click more. This again, will we'll show you some of those features. Um, this is where you can do for, you know, for sale pending coming soon, new construction for a closure and short sale. Again, um, I don't see clients really messing around with this button. Um, I'm gonna let Zoom to catch, let Zoom catch up real quick. Uh, I typically would probably see people just do active uh, coming soon and new construction. Um, I don't, people usually don't care that much about pending, um, but it's still nice to know to see how many uh, homes are pending in the neighborhood. Um, as we go down, we can adjust the, uh, the bathrooms, the living areas, uh, lot size you're built, and just some more, um, some more pieces of information down here. So uh, we can also do map, where we can change the type of map that we see if we want default or satellite. Um, just some more features for your client. This resembles um, a lot of the other apps. And the reason being is, uh, is that uh, people have been using those apps for, for decades now. And this is very easy for them to, uh, to transition into, right? Um, it's very simple. Uh, it's very self-explanatory um, for the average consumer. Uh, they can click on price, beds, baths, right? It's really cool. You can just click these interactive buttons, right? This is a little scrolly wheel. Um, Right, so there's really no tutorial needed, but it's nice that, um, that if you were to go over some of these features with your clients on their buyer consultations or perhaps their seller consultations, just to give them an idea and just download it for them on their phone. Um, and in that way, you can kind of showcase to them very quickly what some of these apps are, right? And we, again, you can click on this house and uh, the home comes up very slowly on Zoom. And then again, there's some pictures of it. 
And if you scroll up, let's see. And come on, Zoom. There it is. Yeah. Again, if you scroll up, you can see, um, again, very interactive, very easy. Uh, underneath the price, it says um, there's a green arrow and it says minus 3,000 or minus 3K. Uh, can anyone tell me what that means? Price has dropped that much? Correct. Yeah. So again, um, very easy, very interactive. It's green, right? It kind of catches the eye right away. Oh, okay, so this house has had a $3,000 price drop, right? It's a three, two and a half, um, 2,100 square feet. Nice home, right? Again, you can scroll down and look at some of the uh, some of the features, right? So let's say that we actually like this house, right? And this will kind of transition into the next um, into the next segment. So we can click on that heart at the very top, and we can save it to a collection, right? I already have a collection as uh, Ivan's favorites. Um, uh, the question in chat is: All available selling properties will be on here. Correct. Yeah. So uh, this syndicates from the MLS, so every available property is going to be on here. So uh, I don't know if Fizbo's and expireds or anything like that are going to be on here, but um, but everything that's available on the MLS is going to be on here. So let's say that we want to save it to my favorites. You just click save again. Um, it's very easy, very simple. Uh, so let's click on this one and let's say that we didn't want to save it to our favorites. So we click save. Uh, it says save to collection. And let's give it just a second for Zoom to catch up. Okay, so there is one uh, that's highlighted and there's one underneath. Um, okay, never mind. It doesn't work anymore. It took that out. Okay, so let's get out of here. And let's click on feed, right? So the feed is going to be empty because I don't have any anything saved. Or any, um, or any home saved on here. So what the feed is used for, and I'm gonna talk over this as this catches up. So for example, if I had uh, saved that home, um, like as a collection, for example, and that home had a price decrease, that price decrease would have appeared here, right? Since I saved it after the price decrease, it's not gonna come up here because it's not new information. Mm -hmm. So this is a good way for, if your clients are, you know, maybe, three, four, five months out, they can be looking at homes. They can have, you know, their top five that they like and they're keeping an eye on to see just in case they're still on the market five months from now, right? And then they can constantly come back here and they can just check their saved searches, their collections um, or everything. And this is kind of like a Facebook feed. Uh, um, and this will give you, I'll answer that question in just a second. Uh, this, yeah, this is just like Facebook. Uh, you scroll in there, anything anything updates, any price decreases, uh, anything that goes into pending. So that way um, they can just kind of scroll here and, and see everything. So did you want to add anything to this, Tommy? Uh, no, the only question I have, uh, can we as the agent go in and look at what houses they have saved? Yes, you can. So if your client has the app downloaded, um, they're already in your command database, right? And if you click and if you find them in your command database on the right hand side where it says uh, like, act, like activity, right? Where it says the last time you texted them or the last time you sent them an email, it'll have something along the lines of, you know, this person saved this house, you know, at 7.35 PM, you know, yesterday, right? So that's a great way to, to take a look at that. Um, and then it will have anything else if they like created a collection or anything like that. So it'll, it'll all be over there. Um, and I see a question in, in their question in chat is, would this be quicker way to view comparable properties by looking at than MLS? Uh, again, um, it's the same information, but if you're running comps, it's easier to do it on the MLS, right? Because you can quickly select a bunch of properties. You can quickly select an area. You can draw some, some circles, right? Um, this, you can do, uh, you can do some pretty basic comps on here, right? If you do search, and you know that um, that you know, this is a three bedroom, two bathroom house, 2,000 square feet, right? You can put three bedrooms, two bathrooms, you know, 1,750 to 2,250 square feet. And you can just kind of see what the other homes are selling for or what the other homes are listed for, right? Or pending. Um, but again, if, if you're gonna do a CMA for a client, I would recommend to, to do it through the MLS because 
you can select multiple properties. You can click, you can hit quick CMA. It'll give you the average uh, list price, the average sold price, the average days on the market. So that's that's more details um, for you. This is more on the consumer end, right? So the consumer is on. Consumers won't be doing their own CMAs, right? That's that's why they have you as the agent to give them insight and to help them read the CMA and to help them make a good real estate decision. So um, that's that's my answer to that question. So as you can see uh, on the map, um, that that one that we selected is now uh, has a little heart next to it. So again, it gives you a little bit of a of an update that a hey, in this neighborhood you actually have one of the houses hearted. So and I heard a question. Ivan? Yeah. Um, I know Tommy just asked that, but uh, just want to make sure. So if uh, you create the opportunity on command for a client and you just add their name and last name, right? Because we just started searching, so we don't have an address. So if they put heart on any property, are you able to see that on command, on opportunity, or where do you see their favorite homes? Uh, if you click on the actual contact card, and if you click on timeline, you'll see which homes they saved. Uh, again, um, I would recommend to also still be setting them up on a search or still be picking properties out and sending them to them manually, right? Okay. Uh, because you know, your goal is to help them find the right home and you have their list of criteria, right? So you would go into MLS, you put in their list of criteria, you find those specific homes, right? You select the three homes that you think are, are best, um, are best matched that match all of their criteria, right? And you send it to them and you, and they, you know, do you want to go take a look at these, right? Mm -hmm. This is, they can browse this on their own as well. Um, let me just pull that up real quick. Yeah, so again, um, I think it would be easier. Uh, you can use it both ways. Um, personally, for me at the moment, I still send manually send the properties through the MLS, mm -hmm. right? Because I can I can quickly pull sellers' disclosures and stuff like that. So um, this is for them to to kind of look through and select the properties, right? And again, um, how cool would it be if you uh, if they liked some of these properties and you preemptively sent them to them as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like let's say that they liked one two three Main Street, you know, and and you know twenty two. Parker or whatever, right? And you send that to them through the MLS. You know, here's some properties that I think that you might like. I'd love to know your thoughts on that, right? Yes. So yeah. So um, again, you can see that, that we have this home hearted. Um, you can kind of go through at the top right, there's a button that says save. What we can do is we can save this specific search, right? So if your clients have the same criteria every single time, they can save the search. Uh, they can save the search with these features. So, and then if they want to do something else, they can also draw their own, their own line and it'll give you a, I drew a weird looking egg, but it'll give you all the houses uh, in, in the custom area that if they don't want to look through by neighborhoods. So on the right, so we're going to move on from, um, from feed and from search because that kind of ties, ties those two things together. Is there any questions on any of those two things before we go on? Uh, let me interject one thing. The um, uh, what we've discovered is, sorry, my phone. Um, the fields for them to search by is not as robust as your multiple listing service MLS. They can't search by single story, two story homes. Uh, there's some other things in there, so it, um, it's best to run it parallel with your MLS, in my opinion. Correct. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, th this is a very a simple overview for them to kind of get a view of the area, to get a view of the houses. Um, like if they're in the neighborhood, right, and they're out somewhere, they can click. They can quickly look at the house that they're standing in front of, right, by just clicking the little arrow, and it'll take it'll take them to there. And if there was a house being sold on my street, they can just click on it, right. Um, yeah, the MLS is going to be more robust. Um, you're going to have, you, you know, like Tommy said. You know, one story, two stories, pool, no pool, right? Um, you, there's a, a bajillion different uh, custom, customizable things that you can do on the MLS to really, really narrow down, you know, what they're looking for because the price point and three bedrooms, two bathrooms is, is really not enough, right? Like if you put 300 to 400 in Plano, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, like you're going to get like 100 houses, right? 
So you want to narrow that down as much as you can, and the MLS will will, uh, will help you with that. All right? Uh, can we see auction house? Uh, I don't believe there's auction houses on here. I, I I've never dealt with auction houses, but from I guess my understanding is I think they have their own websites where they host these auctions or they do it through the city. Um, is that correct, Tommy? I believe so. I don't, we, I, if, if you can't search in an MLS, you will not be able to search it on this app. Yeah. So, so sometimes people would put houses on here um, and then they'll have uh, in the description, right? It'll have something like, Oh, this auction is going to be held at, blah, 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 at this specific time, and here's the link for that, right? I've seen those before. I'm sure everyone's seen those before in MLS where in the description it says this is an auction house. Um, but I don't, there's not going to be anything that specifically says only look for auction homes. So, yeah. So uh, our third one at the very bottom, uh, there's guide. Um, this is, I'm very, very excited for this feature and for it to be, uh, to be fully fleshed out. Um, this is a great way for you to communicate with your client and for them to be able to check in where they are in the process at any moment. So it goes, it goes two ways. There's a buying and a selling, uh, and they can go through. And as you, uh, as you click on some of these features, it'll give you some more information, right? So start your search. Let's click on that. It says searching for the perfect home it may seem daunting at first glance. Luckily your Keller Williams agent will be by your side every step of the way. And then it says, how do I start using my app? And just some nice text on here. Um, they can click complete, right? The very bottom, we're completed. Next step, right? Uh, next step is to get pre-approved, right? And you can customize these. Um, you can customize the text, right? Later on, you'll be able to make videos for um, every specific part. So this is great if you're a client. Um, for example, we're under... Uh, we're under home inspection, right? And they forget what that is. So they can click on home inspection. And right now it gives you some details on what that is. Um, it says, and let me wait for, for Zoom to catch up, right? It says uh, what's included in the home inspection, right? Roof condition, structural condition, appliances, plumbing, you know, et cetera, right? Um, later on, you'll be able to upload a video on here, which would be nice. So you can kind of explain this. They can read this at their own time, or you can explain this to them in video format. Uh, which is great because, again, you know, if they wake up at two in the morning and they're like, oh, my God, what's going to happen tomorrow? What's this inspection? I completely forgot. Um, they'll be able to kind of read this over, and this would be a helpful reminder to them. And, again, this will give them perspective as to where they are in the process, um, where they are in the process of buying the home or selling their home. Uh, you can customize this uh, through the uh, through command, um, through the browser, uh, under, um, I believe, under consumer. So uh, it should be sites and app setting, and then you can customize some of these. Um, there is also a link that you should have gotten in your email, um, or I think Eddie or someone could send it out, which will give you the uh, uh, the Kelly guide to um, to set your app up. So you can, yeah, these will be able you'll be able to customize these. Um, put some features in there, and later on, they'll become more fleshed out. And because um, the idea behind this, right, is you talk to your client and um, you update them in the process, right? So you, you, you're done talking with your client. Um, and for example, you're, you're part of the past the pre approval. You call them, you say, Hey, congratulations. I see you got pre approved with Keller Mortgage for, you know, 250000 So excited to get to work with you guys and to help you find the right home. And you, and then you're like, you know, cool. Thanks. We'll see you, you know, on Saturday to look for homes, right? And you can click check mark and pre approved, right? And um, later on, on their, on their end, they'll be able to see tour homes and it will say, Hey, you know, your agent has moved you from get pre approved to tour homes. And what that means is, Right, and here are some things that you should know before touring homes. Like bring some snacks, you know, I'll provide the water, I'll provide the snacks, you know, get ready to do this, get ready to look at multiple houses. You know, Ivan's gonna bring a clipboard with some papers on it, and then you're gonna kind of make some notes, you know, get ready to draw three of your favorite things. So you can customize this. This will be a great way for you to, to kind of reaffirm what you told your clients over the phone, and then they can kind of read over this as well. So uh, let's move on to saved. Very bottom. 
Um, again, these two sections are, are pretty, uh, pretty quick. Um, there's recent collections and recently saved searches. I don't have any saved searches, but I do have some uh, collections. We can click view all. And there's two homes that I've uh, favorited. Um, we can click on this first one. And I believe this one is um, pending, right? So this is another home that I saved. And let me just wait for Zoom to catch up. There it is. Okay. Yeah. So I can click on this one. It's pending. Okay. I lost out on it. Um, they actually have a sign in their MLS pictures. You're not supposed to do that, but it's okay. Um, and again, you can kind of go through and you can see all your saved, um, all of your saved homes in, in my favorites. So uh, that's pretty much it with saved. Again, pretty self-explanatory. Um, your collections, your saved searches, anything that you save, um, you can put it in here. There's also a button for new collections. Uh, you can create a different one. Um, for example, if your client is looking in two cities and they want to sort these collections, they can have a Plano collection and an Allen collection, right? So very simple, very easy for, for your clients to understand. Um, you just got to let them have some time to click all the buttons and to mess with it. So uh, any questions on guides and on the saved feature? I have a question. So if I had a client that was looking for a lease, let's say to 2000 a month in multiple areas. So she's wanting Allen and let's say Frisco. Can I customize a save for her and then send it to her? Or should I just continue to use MLS for her to get those automated um, messages or that concierge service where it'll update as something new comes on the, the market. So um, from, from my understanding, I don't know if anything has changed uh, since the last time I looked at this, but uh, you, there's, I don't think you can save specific searches for your clients through the app okay. yet, right? Okay. Um, ideally, right, um, and I'm sure this is something you're working on, is that you want to be able to have a custom saved search for them on the phone that will right. go into their feed, right? But for right. now, I would still use the MLS at the moment. So do you have anything to add to that, Tommy? Do you know if you can... Uh, but save searches for people? I don't, I don't think that you can interact with their searches, no, sir. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it for saved and guides. And then um, one more feature I wanted to talk over, um, if you click on more, you can actually add a co-buyer. So, um, so, so if it's uh, two spouses looking for a house, right, or a family looking for a house, um, everyone can have the app downloaded and you can um, interact with your co-buyer right? Um, make experience collaborating, adding your co-buyer. This will enable them to have discussions, create collections, um, share agent insights and guides with you. So um, this is a great feature if two people are on the app. Um, and uh, next time I do this, I'm going to work on getting someone else to be a co-buyer with me so I can show you how those features work. But, um, but kind of get your clients to, to add their spouse if they're buying or their kids or, or their, their parents if they're buying together. Um, and see how that interacts and just, again, follow up with them, ask them questions, how do they like the app, you know, um, what's your favorite feature, you know, what, what's one thing that you would want to see in the app. So um, let's just kind of be proactive with that. So any questions on the app? Um, we have five minutes for questions. So just any questions on this, just go ahead and shoot. And we'll, me and Tommy will be able to answer them for you. Let me ask you guys this. How many people have shared the app and are you sharing it with everybody that you're running into, your sphere of influence, your friends, and all the rest of that? Are y'all doing that? If you need an honest answer, I yeah. haven't shared this one because I didn't know everything about it. I wanted to be a pro and then share it with my clients. So I used to share the previous app, not this one. I haven't shared this one yet. Okay. But I will because I learned a lot. Now I am I have more confidence to share it with my clients. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, the, um, there is a way, f um, and I can't remember how to do it. Um, I need some help with this one. But you can go into command, and there's a place in command that you can go see who you share your app with, and I believe how much activity they have had on it. Are you aware of that, Ivan? Um, I think that's – wouldn't that be under activity under specific contacts, or um, are you talking about something else? I think I'm, 
somebody, I think it's something else that you can actually see a list of the people that you have sent your app to. Um, I need to, I need to follow back up with that. Um, uh, so that you can see how many people are playing with your app and, gotcha. how, engaged, and how engaged are they um, in this. Or some people don't care about this thing at all. Mm -hmm. Other people are going to live by it. Right. Yeah, I think um, that might actually be under filters. You might be able to filter by, um, by who uses the app or it will be under reports. Um, but let me, let me get back with you guys on that. Yeah, that'd be interesting because I have sent out this app to uh, quite a bit of people and I have no idea. One other thing is I had one possibly uh, future buyer and I sent the app to him and I checked with him and he's saying that he's using it. Okay, so in command, when I created a new opportunity under his name and I think there's a screen We'll go close to the transaction or something, and it's saying that uh, the buyer haven't registered uh, to the app or something, and I'm not quite sure uh, what am I supposed to do there. Uh, if it's so, if it's branded to you, it should be under buyer profile. It should have um, registered with the consumer platform. Um, again, if, if it somehow didn't get registered to you and he's using it and you're communicating mm -hmm. with him, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't see that being too much of a problem. If you're still communicating with the prospect and he's looking at homes through the app, you're sending him homes through the MLS, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, um, just follow up with them. I guess something you can ask him is you can ask him to go to profile and see if your name appears there. And not, if not, that you can walk him through how you can make that happen. Um, but that, that would be my recommendation is to, is to see, again, I don't know how far away he is. Like if he's buying a house next month, right. Then you're probably talking to him every day, but if he's a year out, then I would see, you know, if, uh, if you can go through this and ask him to just check real quick for the settings and see, maybe even send a screenshot or something and see if your name is on there. Yeah. When, when I sent the app out, I sent it from this application. And, um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. I, I have to go back and command because it somehow it wouldn't let me move to the next step. But I guess I thought it would be a question for command the next time when uh, uh, when mean? they have opportunity. What, what do you mean? It won't let you move to the next step? Yeah, um, I forgot what the screen looked like, but I know when I go in and create the opportunity, put in the profile and all that, and then there's a screen giving me to. Um, one of the two, it's called uh, the buyer having registered to the app. Uh, and there's another one, it's also the same thing too. And then there's nothing else for me to do other than that. Gotcha, but, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so yeah, I think what we're talking about is app association and guide. So it says not registered with the consumer platform and then the client must be associated with your app before your guide is available. Yes, right? yes, I think so. Yeah, so, yeah, so, like I said, um, reach out to him and see if your name is on the, uh, uh, if your name is on under profile and if it is for him and it's just not showing up for you, then, uh, we can reach out to Eddie and he can make a support ticket for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, any more questions about the app or about the, uh, the consumer experience? Nope. I'm good. Awesome. Uh, I know uh, we had one question for me, non-command non, uh, related. So uh, it's two o'clock. Uh, I respect your time, guys. You guys are all free to go. Thank you for attending. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Tommy, for co-hosting. <laughs> You've been really fun, really yeah. awesome. It's still been a lot more fun in person, but uh, this will do for now. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm teaching you all this stuff really well. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, you, so thank you for showing me everything so 10 much. minutes before this class started. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. Thank, Thank you guys. You. Have fun. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Have a great weekend. Be safe.